Good morning. Welcome to Ripley Presbyterian Church in this day after, uh, well, I almost said Thanksgiving, day after Christmas, the second day of Christmas, as Tommy Covington told me a few minutes ago. I have set my Bible somewhere that had my announcements in it, so y'all help me along as we share in our announcements before we begin our worship time, then I'll go find my, my Bible. I'm good. I've got, I had some special notes is what I was uh, sharing in it this morning. I uh, do want to update you that our mission emphasis this month, we're finishing up with our Christmas joy offering, and that will be to provide a love and assistance to people throughout the world. But then, beginning in January, our mission emphasis will be in the tornado disaster relief for our friends and brothers and sisters in Christ in the Mayfield, Kentucky area. And uh, we'll be gathering funds all month and then make a gift to that area along with our partner churches throughout our presbytery. So we'll have that emphasis as we do every month. This is above and beyond our regular tithes and offerings, our opportunities to be the hands and feet of Christ in what we do as well as in what we say. So that will be, yeah, there we go. Let me have that. You want to get on camera with me a minute? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Manya. Okay, so uh, other announcements. We will have some uh, good preaching next Sunday for a change. The Reverend Dr. Greg Goodwiller will be preaching. I'll be doing mission work in New Orleans uh, next Sunday. I'm going to a football game, really. So, Leon, I'll be on the streets doing some witnessing and uh, preaching, hopefully, at some time that day. That's going to be next weekend. Uh, so, Dr. Goodwiller will be here. We are blessed to have him sharing his leadership. Grateful for that. Okay, let me look here just a moment to see if there are other announcements. Are there anything that you know of, Lynn, that we need to mention verbally? Uh, <clears throat> Sounds great. Very good. Okay, any other announcements does anyone have out there today? Okay, uh, let's uh, focus a minute just uh, on our prayer concerns and any joys that we want to lift up with each other. We do want to continue to be prayerful for uh, the family of my uncle, Jimmy Hill, who uh, died this past week, and uh, we had a uh, graveside service for him. Uh, I can't remember what day now. Was it Wednesday, right? And uh, they'll do a memorial service a little later in the month of January at his home church in our home church, Mount Zion, Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Uh, continue to be prayerful for our friend, Jimmy Gillard, who's making some recovery, and uh, certainly be prayerful for Ann and Hollis Wigington and uh, Send our love to you all joining us virtually, Ann and Hollis. Hey, Pat, good to see you on there this morning as well. Uh, Mom's making progress. She's on her prayer list, seeing better every day. Absolutely, for sure. And then uh, continue to be prayerful for my Uncle Danny Wilbanks on Mom's side of the family too. Are there other updates, additions to our prayer list today? Joy, we want to celebrate. Judy is back in action and doing better. She has survived the shingles. And sometimes that's not an easy task, is it, Tommy? Gracious alive. Y'all be sure and get your shingles vaccinations. <laughs> you got your. She said, I got it once. I didn't know I had to do it again. They won't have to tell you the next time, will they, Judy? It's like Manya and I said about the flu vaccine. We were a little late this year. We paid the price. They won't have to remind us next year when it's time. Halloween comes here. We'll mark it on our calendar. Are there other joys or concerns? 
We celebrate the joy of this holy season. Let us together now worship our God in the joy and gladness of our salvation. <laughs> call to worship is from Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. All the earth sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. Would you join with me in responding to that call to worship by petitioning and praying to God our prayer of confession. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we lower our heads before you and we confess that we have too often forgotten that we are yours. Sometimes we carry on our lives as if there was no God and we fall short of being a credible witness to you. For these things we ask your forgiveness, and we also ask for your strength. Give us clear minds and open hearts, so we may witness to you in our world. Remind us to be who you would have us to be, regardless of what we are doing or who we are with. Hold us to you and build our relationship with you and with those you have given us on earth. Amen. <clears throat> Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Let us celebrate our forgiveness and proclaim God's glory as we share together in a hymn of praise, number 41.
first reading comes from the Old Testament section, page 638, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward, and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Would you pray with me? Oh God, I petition you and ask with every fiber of my being that I can that you pour forth your grace upon this reading and reflection of our word. As we humbly surrender even our capacity to speak and listen to your power, O Holy Spirit, we need you, God, for this message to have meaning in our lives and in the lives of those we serve through your love and for your glory. Will you come, O Holy Spirit? Will you pour forth upon each of us those in this sacred setting and those joining us in their sacred space this morning, wherever you are, will you help us, O oh God, to be molded more in your image. That we may know the joy of Christmas this day and forevermore. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our second lesson of the scripture today is from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 2. We're going to continue from where we picked up last, uh, well, this Christmas Eve, just a couple of days ago. And that reading began in chapter 2 with verse 1. We shared verses 1 through 14 on Christmas Eve. So I'm going to pick up, instead of sharing that whole chapter, I'll begin with verse 8 of chapter 2. Mary and Joseph have journeyed to Bethlehem from Nazareth that seventh, seven day or several days ride for sure and walk uh, down to Joseph's homeland in Bethlehem and Mary has just given birth to the Christ child. This is where our reading begins today. Listen with me for the word of God from chapter 2 beginning with verse 8. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and had gone into the heavens, are gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. What do we do on December 26? When the Advent wreath starts looking a little weary, when the presents have been opened and just about all the turkey has been eaten, the celebration and festivities have ended, how do we continue the joy of Christmas? Do y'all ever have a little letdown? After Christmas, we opened some presents last night after we got home. Manya said, I'm kind of glad we saved some to now because I always feel a little bit depressed on Christmas night. It's all over. What do we do, church? People of faith. To live out the joy of Christmas on December 26. I think there's some reminders in our text today. And in our faith that we can take with us the spirit of Christmas, even beyond the 25th. Because as Tommy and Kathy, we pointed out, we were talking about before the service, this is not the end of Christmas. It's really just the beginning of Christmas, the second day of Christmas. How can we, church, give light to the world around us in darkness? How can we inspire others through the joy that we have of our faith. I think we're the hope that Christ has left with us as he did the shepherds at the visiting and embracing of the Christ child. So a couple of things I want to reflect on that I hope you'll take with you today and I'll take with me throughout the year helping me to live out Christmas the joy of our life in Christ throughout the year. One thing that I think of about Christmas, the holiday season, is home, family, being present with those we love. Even when at times they drive us a little crazy, right? Can we say that in church? Can we be honest in the pulpit? Is that all right? We love them even, Christ, when we don't like them, when they get on our nerves at times. That's what love is. It's being Present, And that's what family is. It's being home. I'm going to sing a couple of words of a song. If you know the next two words, would you say them with me? Almost heaven. Yeah, Connor's got it. Now, I know more of you knuckleheads knew the rest of that song than Connor. In fact, just about everybody here has heard that song, Take Me Home, Country Road. Manya and I were, well, I kind of eased her. She doesn't like me to watch the news over her shoulder. Does that bother any of y'all? That's kind of eavesdropping. I'll slip in there and watch the news over her shoulder. She was watching a news show this morning, and they were talking about the power of that song, Country Roads. It's, it's wildly popular in Japan. Did y'all know that? Other parts of the world, even in Mississippi, and we're singing about West Virginia. And as they documented the power of that song, they said the power of the song and why it's so contagious is because of the message it says here. Take me home to the place where I belong. We all have a desire. Leon, to be where we belong. And oftentimes that's home. Sometimes that's home in a literal sense. Sometimes it's a yearning to be with those we love and those who love us. That's the place where we belong. That was the place that the shepherds desired to be in our text today. Did you hear it? The angels had come 
and proclaimed the good news of the great joy. And what was the response of the shepherds? It says here in verse 15 that when the angels had left, the shepherds said to one another, they were in one accord on it, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place. So they went with haste to see Mary and Joseph and the child. There was a desire to be where they belong. And they belong in the presence of love and joy through the Christ child. So friends, may we remember on December 26th. May we remember when the angels have departed and the songs have ended that there is still joy found in Christ. Being where we belong is in this sacred setting, in the place of worship. Church, hear me now. Don't stop going to church. Don't stop being people of worship throughout this year. This is the gift of our salvation being where we belong in the presence of God in the presence of those who love us and those we love that's how we know the joy of Christmas throughout the year another gift of Christmas I think is uh, being thankful on Christmas Eve when we gathered here my great niece Lucy great in many ways great because she's like a a grandchild, but she's my niece. Great. That's what they call them, right? Great niece. But also, she's kind of great. So, she asked during the service, is this Thanksgiving or Christmas? But you know, I think that's an important confusion that we should all make. Because Christmas is about thankful people giving to other people. It is about practicing Thanks and giving. That's at the spirit of what God gave to us through the Christ child. The greatest gift our world has known. The gift of salvation that our Savior would come to this world as an infant vulnerable child to take on our infant vulnerability of our sinfulness and conquer it forever. That's the gift. Of Christmas, so we all, church, have something to be thankful for, don't we? Dwight Eisenhower. So maybe y'all thinking, before I get to Eisenhower, Jody's just giving us a little preacher talk. He's telling us to be thankful and worshipful and all that stuff this morning. But that doesn't apply to the real world, to me trying to make a living, to me trying to make a name for myself in my career or uh, on my team or whatever. How does this apply in the real world? Dwight Eisenhower said this once. He said, a great sense of humility is an attribute I've observed in every leader that I've ever respected. And he went on to give an example. He said, I remember countless times I heard Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of England during World War II, stand before an assembly of service leaders and civic leaders with tears in his eyes expressing his deep gratitude for them helping England in their darkest hour. See what Eisenhower was saying. That from Humility comes thanksgiving. If you don't get anything else today, I, even, I don't write down a lot of stuff. I wrote this down. I didn't want to mess it up. I did want to mess this up, friends. Hold on to this. If we are not humble, then we cannot be thankful. And if we are not thankful, then we cannot be joyful. That's just about an amen minute, even in a Presbyterian church. Is there room for more joy? That's the question. In your life. There is in mine. And what I've found is that when I humbly say, I can't do it alone, like Churchill did, that inspires me to be thankful for those who've helped me. And when I'm thankful, I'm happier more joy 
filled. Friends, that's the gift of Christmas. Isn't that what our disciples experienced this morning? That after the angels had stopped singing on December 26th, when the Advent wreath was growing weary, the disciples went to see the Christ child. And then the ending of our reading today on verse 20 said this. The shepherd, not the disciples, the shepherds, y'all see where I'm going. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen and had been told to them. They continued to be people of joy, to be people of thanksgiving. May we take that treasure with us throughout this season and find it. One other gift of Christmas beyond being present and being thankful is to be givers, right? The gift of giving is greater than the gift of receiving. We were opening packages last night, and I may embarrass Sage a little bit, but she was sitting back and just, she wasn't opening anything. She said, I want to watch y'all open first. She was having a ball watching us open the gifts she'd given us and others had given she reminded me of one of the treasures of Christmas. And it's not in getting, Kathy. It's in giving that we know the true joy of this holy season. Isn't that what began it all? That Mary and Joseph embraced the call of faith to give their very stability and well-being to bring forth a child ordained from heaven to give life and love to all people. You see, that's what the angels proclaimed in our text today. This love isn't just for a few. It's for all who God favors. And guess who God favors? Every single member of our Lord. Creation. So friends, as we end today, I want to remind you that the joy of Christmas after the birth and after the celebrations is ending can continue for us all. If we embody that spirit of the shepherds to be present where we belong, to be thankful in all things, and to give to those around us as we have graciously received from Almighty God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in prayer as we share that gift of giving by praying for each other. What a great gift this is. Friends, I believe in prayer. I'm adamant to proclaim it, not because I'm so holy, but because I'm so broken and so incomplete and so in need of God's grace. If you feel that way as well, will you pray with me and let us petition God for each other and with one another? Let's pray. Oh God, we bow in your presence. So grateful for your grace and the gift of life and love we have in you. We celebrate the holiness of this season. We ask that daily, Lord, you use us as your hands and feet to give hope to others around us. As we practice our gratitude and humbly surrender, knowing we need more of you and less of us. Pray for the ministry of our church. May we be light and hope to this community and beyond the walls of this congregation or even this denomination of faith where your gospel is practiced and proclaimed, oh God, will you inspire, will you empower, will you use your people for good and hope? We pray for our nation. We're grateful to be living in this land of freedom and liberty that didn't come free for people who defended and supported and earned our right of independence. We give thanks. We pray for our president, our senate, our congress, the supreme court. We do lift up those who protect us in harm's way through their military service. 
We pray for our state, our county and city governing bodies, our economy, both nationally and locally. Be with those who no one else is praying for this day, oh God. Not only uh, family and friends that we cherish and you call us to minister to first and foremost, but those even that has no family or have no family and no one else is praying for today. We ask that you guide us all in the paths that would be pleasing to you that will help us to live out the joy of our salvation individually. So right now, God, we pray for each person individually as we pray for everyone and everyone prays for us and that great holiness of the mystery of your Holy Spirit being present. You know the needs for each of us, the wants, the sins, the brokenness that we all have, the desires, the hungers, the gifts. Will you bring healing and wholeness? Will you bring miracles of grace beyond what we even know to ask? Will you come, O oh Holy Spirit, and help us know the joy of Christmas this day and forever? And now, God, as your children, we join our voices as one and say the words and prayer you taught us. Praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we do in our worship setting, we remember the essentials of our Christian faith by affirming our faith together. I invite you to share with me in reciting the Apostles' Creed, written in the early centuries of our church, the foundational documents of every denomination who embraces Christ. We speak of the Holy Catholic Church. That means the church universal, every church under the mantle of Christ's grace. These are the essentials of what we believe. Would you stand with me? Let us together affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It was such a joy to worship with you all in this sacred space today. To worship with you all. Ginger, I see you there that joined us virtually. And now let us go forth as the light of Christ with God's blessing for us. That was first uttered by the prophet and priest Aaron. For God, for his people, we still receive that blessing today. Will you share with it with me? May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his gaze upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Christmas. Y'all have a wonderful day. So good to see you all that joined us. If I didn't reply then, I will later. I know there are others that have posted. That Judy Austin was watching on camera and in the church here today. Y'all take care. God bless you. Merry Christmas.
good day today, wasn't it? Okay. Absolutely. Y'all still here? God bless you. Thanks, Debbie. Good to see you.